Hi again, this is Sammy. I will be doing fractional exponents, basically changing from exponential to radical form. Also, how to switch from negative exponents to positive exponents. So a few rules here that you, we should remember. So x to the power of m over n, you change it to radical form, n be becomes the radicand, so basically the root, and then m stays as the power. Uh, uh, also, if you have negative exponent x over y to negative m over n, you could flip this, make it y over x, and the m over n becomes positive. Lots of students, what they do, they change this to n over m and they make that positive. No, you cannot do that. It's the base. This is the exponent. This is the base. It's the base that flips, and then you could make the exponent positive. So let's check out some questions here and apply these rules to them. So first one is four to the power of three halves. So that becomes the square root of four to the power of three. So the two is the n, so it goes right here. And we don't write, if we don't write two here, that means it's the square root. That's because the square root, there's a two imaginary two that, or, or invisible two that we don't write here. And so this basically means you'd always take the square root first. You don't want to go raise four to the power of three. The number becomes big and then you try to square root it. It's easier to just square root the four, which is two, and you still have the three on top and two cubed is eight. That's two times two times two. Again, eight to the four thirds. So here this becomes the cube root of eight to the power of four. The cube root of eight is two. It's basically which number when you multiply it by itself, it gives you eight. It's two and then it's two to the four. So since you know two cubed is eight, all you need to do is just multiply it by one more two and that will give you 16. Two to the power of four is 16. Or just uh, two multiplied by itself four times. Now, how about negative exponents? So as I said, when you have negative exponents, you flip the X and the Y and make Y over X and change the exponent to positive. Now you could tell me, oh, there's only X here, but there's no Y. Yes, there's invisible Y, which is one under the 25. So the Y is one. So all you need to do flip this and make it one over 25 uh, to the power of one half, because now the exponent becomes positive. And the next thing is, to the power of one half becomes the square root of one over 25 according to, to uh, this. And when you're square rooting a fractions or when you're square rooting fractions, it's simple still. Like don't worry about the fraction and, 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 and panic. All you need to do is just square root the top, square root of one is one and the square root of 25 is five. I'll just change colors here so. Uh, my answers wouldn't mix up with the beginning of the next question. This one here again, this is over one. So the X is nine, the Y is one. So you flip it as one over nine. And then this becomes automatically positive. Remember, we don't flip this. We just flip the base. We don't flip the exponent. The exponent becomes positive when you flip the base. And now this becomes the square root of uh, one over nine to the power of three according to this. Um, and the square root of one is one, the square root of nine is three, you do the square root first and this still to the power of three. Now one to the power of three because you cube the top, you cube the bottom, gives you one, three cubed gives you 27. Now let's come to this. Here we have, um, just put the negative right here. It's supposed to be a negative right there and not there. So here, um, the same thing. We have a negative exponent. So if to make the exponent positive, we have to flip this. The negative sign there doesn't become positive. Is this that becomes positive? According to this rule, you just flip whatever is inside the brackets. Uh, from x over y to y over x, and then this becomes positive. So here we flip this and it becomes negative 27 over one, but one, we never write it underneath anyway. So, so this becomes negative 27 to the two thirds. And now the exponent is positive, easier to work with. So this according to this becomes the cube root of negative 27 all to the power of three, which gives me the cube root of negative 27 is negative three because negative three times negative three is nine times 
negative three. Hold on a second. Just give me one second here. Back up a little bit. So this becomes the this the three is the n. So this becomes the cube root of negative twenty seven all to the power of two. So the cube root of negative twenty seven is negative three to the power of two. Uh, you could cube root negative numbers. If this was the square root, you won't be able to do negative. You cannot square root negative numbers, but this is the cube root of negative 27, which is which number when you multiply it by itself three times, you get negative 27, that's negative three. And then you raise it to the power of two because that's your M and that will give you nine. Here, there's no negative exponent. We just have to change to radical form right away. So this becomes the radical square root of eight over Just fixing this typo that's supposed to be two thirds. Now that's the only way we could do, do this without a calculator. Okay, because now this becomes the cube root again of eight over 125 all squared. Doesn't matter if you put the square right here or the same way here, it doesn't matter. And don't square this and square that and your numbers get big on you and then the cube root them always do the cube root first. The cube root of eight is two. The cube root of 125 is five because five times five times five gives you 125. All of that squared and two squared gives you four and five squared gives you 25. So the answer here is 25. Here's another one that has a negative exponent. So as I said, X over Y goes to Y over X. So this becomes 16 over nine. And automatically this becomes positive exponent, which means it's the square root of 16 over nine cubed. And be assured when you square rooting this, you square root the top and you square root the bottom. Yes, it's a fraction, but it's very easy. Just you square root the top and then you square root the bottom, which gives you four over three, and you still have the cube right there. And the final answer, four cubed will be 64. That's four times four times four. And three cubed is 27. And these are fractional exponents dealing with negative exponents as well, changing from exponential form to radical form. As always, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, and share with friends and family. And if you like, subscribe to my channel. Till next time, bye-bye.